This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, this is Allison Taylor, and we are thrilled to be joining you. Today we've got a very interesting show as we spotlight women's sports at UCLA. Before we meet our first guests, let's take a look at the upcoming events. One of the strong programs year after year at UCLA is the women's tennis team, and Stella Sampras Webster has a great squad again this year. We're very pleased to be joined by a couple members of that team with us, Caitlin Ray and Courtney Dolhide. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Courtney, you've been here a couple of times. Always good to see you back on Bruin Talk. Nice to see you, too. Now, you've got your own little web show now on uclabruins.com, Courtside. How's that going? It's so fun. I love, you know, just talking about the season and updating all our fans and the Bruins just on our progress thus far. And um, I think it helps with the support, getting fans out to our matches. So it's been really fun. Have you managed to stay humble, even though you're now a big TV star? Of course. <laughs> In one of your most recent episodes of Courtside, you talk about getting to play with professional athletes like Marty Fish. It's got to be great to play at a place where a, a professional tennis player could show up on the court at any given day. It's awesome. Um, it's, you know, so inspiring, like I said, just to be next to them on the court. And then on top of all of that, um, my doubles partner, Pamela Montez, and I got to hit with Marty Fish and James Blake um, like a couple of weeks ago, which was so cool. Um, and they're just such cool guys. And um, last night, actually, or two nights ago, there was this event at Poly Pavilion. It was a charity event, and all of these big name tennis players were there. So we were around them once again, and it was just really exciting. Yeah, Caitlin, what's that like to suddenly look up and say, oh yeah, that's Novak Djokovic playing at my school. Was that pretty cool? <laughs> no, that's neat. I think that's just like a testament to um, how lucky we are to be part of UCLA Athletics because um, it's very rare to have that opportunity. And, um, and the players love LA and they love using UCLA facilities. And uh, so it's great. And I think it also helps us because um, it brings fans and uh, maybe we'll, by coming to watch 
watch tennis in Poly, maybe they'll want to come out and watch our matches. It just grows like um, the popularity of tennis. And you get great. to play at the LA Tennis Center on campus at UCLA. It's a great facility. It's hosted a lot of pro events. It's always good to play in nice places, isn't it? Oh yeah, we're, we have great facilities. Um, and I, I think it was actually built as part of the Olympics way back. Um, and so to have like such a great stadium, um, yeah, I, I pinch myself every day. We're very, very lucky. Now you talked about the pros coming to LA, but both of you have come a long way from LA. You are from Arkansas, Caitlin, and Courtney, you came from Illinois. What was the lure, first Caitlin, of coming out to UCLA? Um, I think I was, I just love like the tradition of UCLA tennis. Um, Coach Sampras Webster and Coach Rance Brown have done a great job just building a culture here and obviously they've uh, won the national championship in 08 and so that was a big thing for me. I think it, that's why we get up in the morning is to try to win a national championship and so I wanted to be on a team where I had the chance to do that and um, there are seven other girls on this team that are great tennis players so I wanted that competitive atmosphere and then of course like the academics are a big, they're, it's a rare opportunity to have great tennis and great academics. So. Now, Courtney, both of your sisters play tennis, your brother plays golf, your cousin, I think, plays professional baseball. There seems like there was a lot of pressure on you to become an athlete. <laughs> um, I mean, not much pressure, just more, I think that my family is just very athletically driven. Um, and my sisters are going to be out here in a couple weeks training, actually, with the USTA with tennis. So, and my brother, he... My whole family just loves UCLA. Ever since I've been here, they just, they've become like fans on the, you know, eastern side of the U.S. So. Your cousin, Tom Gorzolani, pitches mm -hmm. for the Washington Nationals. You become right. a, a Nationals fan? <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I'm just a sports fan, and it's cool to see him doing big things. And he used to play in Chicago also, so that was really fun going to his games. Caitlin, how about you? Did you have a lot of other athletes in your family? How did you get into tennis in the first place? Um, I'm a little bit of a different. Uh, most kids who play tennis, both of their parents played, but neither of my parents did. They just put me in a lot of, I did soccer and gymnastics um, and then ended up choosing tennis when I was 11. Um, but my dad was really involved with sports and I grew up watching um, football with him. I'm like a sports center junkie. Um, <laughs> I, I love sports. Um, and that's a great thing about here. We can all go out and support all the other teams, but um, they just, um, I was always just uh, inspired or just motivated to get into sports and um, ended up choosing tennis. Caitlin, you've been sidelined for a while, but you're about to come back onto the court. You've got to be excited about getting back in competition. Oh, yes, sir. There's um, there's no feeling like going out um, with five other girls and competing in a dual match. And um, so I'm really, I'm just excited to compete, and we're about to hit the middle of our season, about to get into the Pac-12. And uh, so it's, it's exciting. I mean, we have to t take it day by day, but it's exciting to try to make this push to win a national championship in May. Courtney, all kinds of competitions. You've got your ladder matches on the team. You've got your intercollegiate matches. You've got the Pac-12s coming up, then the Nationals. Does the enormity of the situation change your approach to the game? I think that this season we tried to start out with, you know, a more balanced outlook just so that we were mentally tough going into the national championship. We have, you know, once again, a really young team. So we wanted to, at the beginning of the season, instill the idea that, you know, it's so exciting at the end of the season and we just want to bring that excitement from the first match. And so we have SC on Friday, but I think we've really tried every single match to bring that same level of intensity so that it's no different. You know, every single match is, is, should be the same. So, Courtney, part of the excitement this season for you is being healthy. Hopefully Caitlin can get back there too. Uh, right. Last year you struggled through for an, with an injury and could, couldn't play singles, could only play doubles. What does it feel like to be back this year basically at full strength? It's amazing. Um, just like Caitlin said, there there's really no other feeling than just being on the court and being able to support your teammates throughout the whole match. Um, it was one thing to play doubles, and that's like awesome to be able to contribute to the team. But it's a whole other thing to also be on the court for the full match. And um, you know, every single match that I've been able to play thus far, it, it's just been so like just like exciting, just being out there and. Um, it's been amazing. If people haven't seen intercollegiate doubles action, it isn't like going out to the park and watching doubles where people are taking one step and lobbing the ball every time. It's like a video game. The game moves so fast. Personally, what's your favorite to play, singles or doubles? Um, I think they're very different. But just the fact that I haven't been able to play singles for about a year, right now my favorite would be singles. How does the experience of playing a lot of doubles help your net game? It, it helps a lot. I'm, 
a very good net player, but it's not very natural for me to come into the net. So it's helped me a lot, like just with my confidence up there. So I've been trying to make that transition to the net more in my singles. Caitlin, you guys just had a very successful trip up north a few weeks ago. And you've got, as Courtney mentioned, you've got home matches against USC, Utah, and Colorado coming up. And then you're kind of getting into that postseason play. So what is the team doing right now to ensure that you guys are at your best going into the rest of the, rest of the season? Yeah, I think right now it's about not getting too high or too low. I mean, we have SC on Friday, and there's no question we want to win um, so badly. But I think it's all about keeping our emotions in check. And really, I think it's about taking it day by day. If we take care of our business every day, and the great thing about our team is we know that, one, if we prepare to the best of our ability, and two, we execute come match day, there's no team in the country that can stand with us. But those are two things that we have to make sure that um, we take care of. And so it's about just controlling the things we can control, and that's work ethic, preparation, attitude and then we know that um, then once match day comes that's the fun part that's what you put the work in every day for and then it's just about competing who wants it most so um, I think with SC coming up this is a good test to see where we are but we also know that win or lose we learn from it and we want to be there in May that's when we want to be number one it doesn't matter who's number one right now but um, this will only help to prepare us tell us about the mental preparation of match day it's got to be different going out to the match than going out Tuesday afternoon to hit some balls yeah definitely um, I think that's why the coaches um, try to stress so much bringing intensity in practice because if you make your practice so tough then match day is like oh this is great you know the match should be what you're um, embracing that's what you should love and so that's why practices are so tough for us and I love the culture that we've built here at UCLA that we're gonna work really hard um, and that's why we deserve to win come match day so um, I think and also in approaching match days it's all about getting into a routine so on match day you do the same thing and so it just feels like any other day Courtney we talked about the video blog that you do the court side and you've got to get your teammates involved in that they're the subjects and the stars of a lot of the episodes has anybody put up resistance to being on camera have you gotten them comfortable about being on camera <laughs> Some of the younger girls um, are definitely, you know, they, they're they excited but get kind of nervous. So um, I think we're going to try to have each one of them make an appearance this season. Well, we talked earlier when you came in, because you've been on our show a few times, mm -hmm. and you were talking before we went on the air about how the first time you were pretty nervous. And after a while, you got comfortable. You got real good on camera. Do you think that getting the other players comfortable on camera will kind of help them get more comfortable as a teammate and as a student here? Yeah, I think it's great practice, honestly, for everything, um, especially being one of the upperclassmen on the team. Um, I, you know, we have to talk to the other girls about a lot of things. We have to approach the coaches about things, and just being more comfortable with your words just always helps, I think. Courtney, you were honored for a Pac-12 honorable mention for your academic success here at UCLA. And as Caitlin was saying earlier, UCLA has an incredible tradition of being both athletically and academically rigorous so how do you balance your day-to-day -day, your practice schedule your studies your tutoring all of that kind of stuff um, I think Caitlin is very good with this as well um, I think it really comes down to just you know if you have to wake up a little bit early if you have to you know sacrifice going out a little bit it, um, you just kind of have to keep you know your eye on the prize which is right now especially since we're in season it's just the NCAAs and just managing schoolwork Caitlin, tennis at a lot of levels is an individual sport. Obviously here it's a team sport. Tell us about the difference between playing in an individual match, maybe a USTA event, or, or playing on a team. Yeah, that's the thing. Junior tennis is so much um, focused about you. And so here, once you come to college, that was a great thing. For the first time in your life, you have seven other girls that are rooting for you. Everyone in the juniors is just glaring at each other and <laughs> hoping secretly that you sprain an ankle. But in, in college, like it's such a supportive atmosphere and um, to have that support. So yeah, it's all about selflessness now, or selflessness now. And um, that's the hard part. You come to college and you realize it's not all about you, but it's so much more rewarding when you adopt that attitude um, and you're working towards a national championship so um, it may, it's really rewarding. Tennis is a kind of sport it's small circles and you see the same people over and over again as you grow up playing juniors and as you get into college is it strange sometime when you're facing somebody you made out of face since you were 13? Yeah you, you almost grow up with all these girls and then you all go your separate ways to different schools and it's neat. Um, tennis has given me so much you travel I, I would never have been able to travel as much as I did um, and then you meet so many great people and then you end up 
um, kind of getting to keep tabs on each other through college tennis. Um, but uh, it, it's neat to look across the net and be like, I've seen you since I was 10 years old. Gordy, I know that a lot of times people come out and see tennis live for the first time and they are blown away how different it is live than on TV. I mean, you watch tennis live, it's a whole new game. Right. Do you ever get that experience where your friends come out for the first time and realize, hey, wait, she's really good? Yeah, um, I think, you know, watching um, tennis on television, the commentators help out a lot, especially with scoring and different things, and they tend to televise like the most exciting and intense parts, and um, they only show certain points. And when you come out live, you see everything. And um, sometimes it's a little bit harder to keep track of the score because um, you don't have a commentator helping out. But also, it's it's really exciting to be able being able to see um, different players' inner point routines and just being able to be so up close and personal. Well, that's great, and congratulations. You've had a great start to the year. Caitlin, we look forward to seeing you back out on Thank the you. court. And the Bruins getting ready for the NCAA is coming up right around the corner. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on Bruin Talk. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We'll be right back for more Bruin Talk after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Larry Drew II of Men's Basketball as our Athlete of the Week. Larry's strong play has landed him second in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. He averages 7.3 points and 35.3 minutes a game for the Bruins. The team's lone senior posted 14 points and 9 assists in his final home game with UCLA, defeating 11th ranked Arizona 74-69. Congratulations Larry and good luck with the rest of the season. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. Well, men's basketball and a lot of sports are just heading into their championship season, but one that's been in the thick of the competition is women's swimming, and they've just finished the Pac-12 championships. Pleased to be joined by a couple of juniors on the swimming team, Anna Senko and Catherine Murphy. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Thank you. Anna, congratulations. You're part of the relay team that qualified for the NCAA championships. That's got to be a thrill. Yeah, it's really exciting. We hadn't had a relay qualify or make the A standard last year, so it was really exciting to have of all four of us swim really fast. Tell us about the feeling of being out there in the championships and they say on your mark it's set what kind of adrenaline is going through you at that moment there was a lot of adrenaline going through me and i had had a lot of caffeine so <laughs> I, I was on the block and i was like shaking but um ting kwa the junior that led off first she won a best time by about two seconds and we were out in front which we weren't really expecting and i was going next and i was like oh all right we're going for it <laughs> and so then it was really a lot of adrenaline because i didn't expect this to be out ahead and then just trying to race everyone and have fun and then I, there was a lot of momentum going through the relay because everyone was just swimming great, so it kind of just snowballed. Catherine, Anna said an interesting thing. You don't think of swimmers as having fun in the middle of the race. It seems like it's such a demanding thing. <laughs> Sometimes are you out there and it's just fun? It is fun. I think we always have fun. I'm a sprinter, so I have a very short period of time to have fun out <laughs> there, but it's always fun, and especially at Pac-12s like this, we're racing, you know, such high-end top teams. It's, it's always fun, and it's great competition. Anna, with the Pac-12 championships coming to a close, I want to talk about the team aspect of swimming. Most people think of swimming as purely an individual sport, unless it's a relay. But tell us a little bit about how all of the events at a collegiate level are team oriented. Um, so, everyone's just supporting each other to try and get the most team points that we can. There's um, at Pac-12s, 24 people can score, so it's just trying to get as many people into finals from prelims and just trying to stay positive and keep the energy and intensity really high. It's a long meet. It's, what, four or five days? So it's really important to just kind of stay balanced and not get too high or too low, just kind of keep everything kind of flatlined so that you can just keep racing and keep the intensity up the whole time. In between days, you're just trying to think about what's going to happen, go through it in your mind, or are you just trying to mentally shut it off for as much time as you can? 
Um, Cindy, our coach, talks a lot about staying in the present, just taking each race, each session, one at a time, because it can get a little bit mentally overwhelming if you start to think about swimming in four sessions from now. So just trying to stay focused on one race at a time and just, you know, once you finish your race, just getting back and supporting all your teammates. And that's Cindy Gallagher, the yeah. women's swimming coach. Catherine, you mentioned you're a sprinter. At what age did you realize that that was going to be your best event rather than going out there for distance? Six. <laughs> From the very beginning, I was always just like, get in there, you know, sprint, get out. Um, yeah, I've always been a sprinter. Just kind of what I like to do. I love to anchor relays. I love to be on relays. So that's kind of like a, I just love to race and compete and I don't like to lose. So. <laughs> well, tell us about the different training you have to do as a sprinter as opposed to some somebody that's going to be out there swimming for 15 minutes at a time. Right, yeah. We do a lot of like um, quick stuff, like a lot of high intensity, much more than like our distance swimmers like Lauren Baker and, um, and Monica and Megan Rankin. Um, they definitely do sets that are much more um, long and mentally taxing, but we're more short and keep it sprinty. Anna and Catherine, both of you guys got the opportunity to compete at the Olympic trials this past summer. I want both of you to tell us about your experience there and how it differed from competing here at UCLA on a college team. Um, the meet was huge. I think there are something like 2,000 swimmers at the meet, which is the largest meet we have, I think, is NC2As, and that's about a little less than 300. So the meet itself is huge, and swimming there is on a huge scale. Like, they had flames on the sides of the pool, like real flames. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was a couple, several thousand people that were in the stands, which never really happens at a swim meet. So it was just kind of an event. Like, like we go to basketball games and stuff, and it's always like, oh, imagine if they put a pool on the court. And that's kind of what Olympic trials felt like. So it was really, I don't know, it was just completely different from anything else I've ever been to. It was really fun. Were you aware of the noise of the crowd as you were competing? Um, they had us, um, right before our race, they had us in a ready room that was probably like kind of the size of this. And then we walked out um, along the side, and you couldn't really see much of the pool. And then like once you walked out behind the blocks, you could just, like the lights and everything, I wasn't really expecting the first time. But um, yeah, you could definitely feel the crowd. <laughs> well, that's an interesting point, because you talked about the different experience on the pool deck and, and going there. But once you get to the starting blocks, you're in the water. Can you shut out everything else once you get in the water, Catherine? I think so, yeah. It's definitely, it's intimidating. I went um, when I was 15, so I'd been to the one before, too. So I kind of knew like how you know there's going to be a huge jumbotron above the, the pool, and it has the huge Olympic rings and everything. And it's, it's a. It's an arena built for concerts, so it's literally, it's insane. It's, you know, the noise, and it, it's all built to make it that kind of hype. And so I knew going into it that that's what I was going to be up against, kind of, you know, being able to shut that out and, like, focus on your race and know that it's still a pool and it's still a race. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think you can, you know, with all the practice we do, we do a lot of mental practice of, like, when you're behind the blocks, like, that's your zone and that's you need to get into your you know your rhythm and your tradition of what you do before you race so you don't start letting those things get to your head and you can perform your best so I think I think we've been trained well to do that. <laughs> Anna Westwood is a long way from Winchester Massachusetts tell us about the difference between being able to train outside in the winter as opposed to being indoors you know basically from November until May when you're when you're back home. It's a huge difference um, something outside is just well when I came on my career trip here I was swimming outside and I saw all the palm trees and stuff when I was out at sunset and I was like oh my goodness I could handle any set as long as I could see <laughs> palm trees while I was swimming and I kind of forgot a little bit about the palm trees so I try and remind myself of that and I'm in the middle of a hard set but um, it's just really easy to breathe outside which I didn't really realize from swimming inside all the time and just swimming outside just feels a lot more relaxed and it's bright Tell us about the, the, the Speaker Aquatic Center, UCLA's facility. It's been open for a few years now. Great place to train and to compete. Yeah. Everything's really new, which is really nice. The, the scoreboard is, um, compared to other pools, we're really lucky with that. Heated locker room. Heated locker room floors. floors. <laughs> it's a Our favorite. Yeah. Hot tub. Hot tub. <laughs> well, Catherine, you're uh, growing up in Novato, up in Northern California, Marin County, mm -hmm. not exactly Winchester, Massachusetts, <laughs> but a little colder up mm -hmm. there. But tell us what brought you down to Westwood. 
Um, my sister was a Bruin, so I've kind of been born and bred a Bruin. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Westwood, and Speaker Aquatics is honestly awesome. Probably the best pool I've been to in years. It's just amazing, and you know, the support we're given through, you know, all the old donors and everything, and everyone who's passed through and been a part of UCLA Swimming, this whole association, is just so awesome. So that's what really stood out to me, I think, um, and the girls on the team, you know. Anna, how old were you when you realized that you had a talent that was different than all the other kids? <laughs> um, I actually didn't start out as the greatest swimmer, and it <laughs> took me a while to get into that groove. I didn't really start improving that much in swimming until I was about 14, and then I started dropping a lot of time, and then I kind of really knew that that was what I wanted to do. Um, I played a lot of other sports growing up, too, but um, swimming was always my favorite from when I was little. Both of you guys are going to be seniors next year, finishing out your Bruin careers. Catherine, do you have any long-term goals with swimming? Or are you looking to carry on after you've graduated from UCLA? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll definitely have to take a break and see if it maybe calls my name to come back. But um, as of right now, I think you know, taking a break and focusing on other parts will be important. But um, I try to focus on first doing all my swimming goals in my senior year. Um, yeah, but I mean, obviously, you know, you, you leave and you still, you still feel a part of it. All of our seniors and alumni always come back and everyone's still great friends. So it's, it's not like I'm going to be completely wiped out of <laughs> I don't think I'll have to go through a detox or anything. <laughs> And as of the middle of February, the team was ranked 14th in the NCAA. You guys just finishing up your Pac-12 championships. What is the team looking forward to doing in the, re the upcoming months to continue improving upon that ranking? Um, well, the NC2A selections for swimming come out today, this morning, I think, sometime. So that's exciting. And um, we'll be headed to Indianapolis in about two weeks, I think. So just try and improve on that, score a lot of points. Um, relays are double points, so we're really excited about our relays, especially our 800 freestyle relay. You guys are in the water a lot. When you go to the beach and you go in the water, <laughs> do you actually get in the water and realize, hey, wait a second, I'm swimming my strokes? Or do you just go on the beach and bounce around like everybody else? Oh, we definitely just bounce around like everyone else. The water's a lot colder than a pool, so. Yeah. I mean, we've been to the beach, and we've actually taken a surfing lesson together. Oh, yeah, that was really cool. And swimming didn't help us that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, no, we were good at paddling. Yeah, we were good at paddling. We were good at getting out there, but coordination was, wasn't fully there. <laughs> but, but, but still fun. I mean, you go to parties yeah. with friends, and you still have fun going in the water yeah. and splashing yeah. people like everybody else does. Pool parties. We still like pool parties. Yeah. <laughs> Anna, you said you played other sports. What did you play growing up? Um, pretty much everything. I did soccer, track, uh, tennis. Um, sailing, basketball, what else did I do? How did skiing, the, I did cross country skiing. <laughs> so how did the competitive edge of, of playing all those team sports, how did that help you when you got onto the UCLA team? Um, I just love to race. I have a twin sister too and she, um, she swims too, but we, growing up we did all the sports together and it was just a lot of racing all the time and just having fun and doing your best. and. I don't know. It's just like having the competitive energy and just wanting to be the best that you can be, I guess. Catherine, any other sports grabbed your attention when you were younger? Yeah, I, I did them all too. Soccer, I liked water polo a lot. I played water polo in high school for a little bit. Um, yeah, running, cross country, all of it. You know, I, I grew up, I'm the youngest of two uh, older sisters, so I always had to like, kind of fight my way, and I've always been really, really competitive. So anything where I can get in and race and compete and win, <laughs> I like. <laughs> well, it's fantastic. You both ended up at UCLA and ended up on Bruin Talk with us. We've loved talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. And we've enjoyed having you, too. The good news is we're back next week with another great show. For Allison Taylor and our entire Res TV crew, I'm Dave Marcus, thanking you for joining us. Until next time, so long from Westwood.